Okay. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to this uh, live deliberation as a part of the series of webinars that we are having uh, from the program Creative and Cultural Businesses Program at IIM Antipa. My name is Amit Karna, and uh, I am the co-chair of this program and a member of the faculty in the strategy area at IIM Antipa. I'm joined here today with uh, the rest of my team of CCVP, uh, Anchal Jain, who has been the co-chair of this program for uh, the last seven years. Uh, we also have Gitanjali Rastogi here. She has been a founding team member of the uh, CCBP uh, since its inception in uh, uh, around seven years back. Uh, and we have the newest member of our team here, Anaka Narayanan. Uh, so all the alumni here who might have not met Anaka, uh, this is the time to uh, say hello to her. Anaka has joined us from um, uh, in the last two weeks and uh, she'll be doing the industry outreach and uh, the content management for this program and going forward. So welcome all to this uh, second live deliberation of uh, the CCBP uh, series of webinars that we are planning. We had uh, an overwhelming response on the first webinar in May end and therefore, we have now thought of uh, going ahead with deliberations every month. So you'll hear more from us, uh, you know, just register uh, at the links that are sent to you or uh, follow us on our social media handles. Those of you who are new to this program, uh, CCBP, as we call it, the Creative and Cultural Businesses Program at IMA is a seven year old uh, program for entrepreneurs uh, early stage and uh, those who are established in the creative and cultural uh, business segment. Uh, it's a six month program with a 15 day module on uh, IMA campus and uh, brings together a blend of uh, faculty from IMA and the birth, uh, visiting faculty from across the world in form of uh, industry practitioners from the creative and cultural businesses. Uh, usually we start in August every year uh, the new batch, but this year, given the situation, we have uh, planned to postpone it to a new date uh, in early 2021. And therefore, we thought uh, this extra six months that we have got uh, to, in order to keep the deliberations on, which has been the hallmark of this program, to learn and uh, continue to share ideas with each other in this uh, sector of creative and cultural businesses, we have embarked upon this journey where we carry out uh, mostly on a Friday afternoon, uh, live deliberations with a panel which we draw upon from uh, the entire world, uh, mostly in this uh, sector of creative and cultural businesses. So let me just jump into the topic for today, which is uh, uh, wellness and beauty. And before I hand over to uh, the panel, let me very quickly welcome and introduce the fantastic panel that uh, we have today and this afternoon. So let me first start with uh, introducing uh, Shikha. Uh, Shikha Jain, she is the owner uh, of the uh, brand Meave, which is a herbal handmade soap. And uh, she has also been passionate and is the founding trustee of Neve, which also stands for New Education and uh, Environment uh, Visions. Uh, thank you, Shikha, for joining us and we are delighted to have you here uh, on the panel. Uh, next we have on the panel uh, today is uh, Subodh, Subodh Marwa. Hi Subodh. Uh, Subodh uh, brings with him uh, over 25 years of uh, uh, experience in uh, uh, consumer management strategy, brand mar marketing and uh, business management across uh, several industries and geographies such as Middle East, North Africa, Europe, uh, North America, and of course, uh, Asia. Um, uh, Subodh is, has spent uh, earlier time with uh, United Breweries, uh, Renbaxi, Sun Pharma, uh, overseeing their operations, uh, including also with the uh, Carlsberg Group uh, in uh, 2011. But currently he is here uh, in his capacity as CEO of Strides Consumer, which is a rapidly growing uh, consumer healthcare uh, entity uh, in the sector. Uh, thank you so much for uh, being a part of this panel. We are delighted to uh, have you here with us uh, today. Thank you for having me, Amit. 
Uh, next panelist uh, I'm pleased to introduce is, introduce is uh, Jayant, Jayant Khosla, who's the Managing Director and uh, Group CEO of uh, VLCC Healthcare uh, Limited. As we all know, uh, VLCC is uh, you know, well known for its uh, wellness and beauty services uh, you know, across 11 countries, 250 centers across 11 countries. Uh, but in addition, they also are into manufacturing and retailing of personal care uh, products and uh, also as uh, a skill developer, uh, having several institutes for uh, beauty and uh, nutrition. Uh, Jayant, of course, is an uh, alumnus of uh, uh, IIM Ahmedabad and has spent uh, several years with uh, a lot of blue chip companies uh, across uh, different geographies in Asia, Africa, Eastern Europe, and uh, North America. Uh, thank you, Jayant, for being here today. I'm delighted to have you back virtually on campus. Uh, thanks for joining the panel. Uh, next we have is uh, Stan. Uh, Stan Islas is joining us from uh, Paris <clears throat> and uh, is a graduate from uh, ESSEC, is an MBA uh, from ESSEC, and has uh, spent several years with uh, L'Oreal in uh, brand and uh, 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 view management. And uh, of course, currently he is busy as the founder of uh, Wired Beauty which is kind of a very interesting uh, interface of uh, beauty tech and IoT. Uh, you know, Stan is the father of uh, three wonderful children and uh, we are delighted to have you Stan here on the panel today. Thanks for joining the panel. Thanks to you. Thanks. And uh, last but not the least, we have uh, our dear friend Manoj. Uh, Manoj has been the mentor for the CCBP and the visiting faculty here on that a program for several years, but uh, uh, more importantly, he's an alumnus of uh, IIM Ahmedabad and comes with uh, several years of, several decades of experience in uh, uh, consumer healthcare uh, with companies like uh, Glexus, with Klein, uh, Procter & Gamble, Gillette, uh, Unilever, and, and so on. So uh, Manoj is uh, currently also the, the founding partner of Wellmore uh, Action Advisory. Uh, and operates uh, from Gurgaon. Thank you, Manoj, for um, agreeing to host this panel. And we are uh, looking to an uh, interesting discussion uh, over the next uh, hour and a half. So without uh, much further ado, I would uh, like to hand over to you to take the conversation forward with your panelists. Thank you, Amit, and uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, First of all, a housekeeping rule, you will see at the bottom that there is a Q&A uh, you know, mark there, a button there. So that's the button you need to use to ask questions, uh, which will come to, the, uh, to all of us, and then we will be able to answer during the Q&A time. Uh, you can use chat to share information, but we are not going to pick up questions from the chat uh, button. So. Um, now let's start, uh, start our discussion. And uh, I would just uh, start by saying that uh, uh, beauty and wellness uh, industries are seeing tremendous changes as we speak. And uh, this is uh, driven by changes in consumer behavior. And some of these changes, you know, I feel are going to stay. Uh, and that is going to impact what businesses will be developing, uh, you know, for them to develop new strategies to manage the consumer needs of the future. So today we have a very exciting and learned panel here with us. And uh, with that, we are going to explore and deliberate on this topic about beauty meeting wellness in the new era. So while the opportunities look very exciting where, from where I see, but before I go to the opportunities, I just want to go to reality. I want to start from ground zero. You know, what is happening today in the industry? And uh, let me start uh, with Shikha. Let me ask you this question. Uh, Neve is a social enterprise. And uh, what has happened over this uh, last uh, 100 days how have you handled uh, the impact of lockdown? What are the things you have done? And more importantly, where do you stand today when you look, uh, look at things uh, happening in your business? Yeah, I think the lockdown has uh, really changed our uh, 
uh, business, uh, you know, uh, completely inner and outer ways. Because uh, previously we were more into retail exhibitions, and I think uh, it was only 20 to 25 percent share of the online business. But today uh, our business is almost the same, but the share of online business is uh, 70 to 75 percent. And the retail and obviously exhibitions are nowhere it's zero, but the retail has gone down to 20 to 25 percent. So uh, this has not totally reversed the situation in the outer sales front. And even at the back end, uh, all our energies are right now going in, uh, putting up, you know, uh, more online material, like engaging our online uh, customer base, our uh, uh, making more of our online uh, presence material uh, for posts and product pictures, everything. So, uh, and it has given us uh, also an opportunity to engage a lot of, uh, you know, yeah, youth uh, with us, as you said, that we are a social enterprise. So we have a lot of uh, around a team of about 10 college going students who are interning with us and working a lot on the digital media presence of art. So uh, we've been able to utilize their talents in you know, promoting our online presence. So this has given us also an opportunity to promote ourselves and they have got an opportunity to uh, you know, utilize their skills. So uh, that has uh, been at the uh, back end and at the very basic operations also, uh, our team is now engaged more in you know, online uh, orders and uh, you know, engaging with those things. So, yeah, it's the main thing is that it has shifted from retail to online. That's all. Sh Shikha, that, that's, uh, that's tremendous news. I mean, in the sense that uh, what you did mention also is that your sales have actually not dropped in this period. Yes. Yeah. So, I guess, yeah, I think uh, one of the reasons is because we are into basic, you know, personal cleansing products. And that's an industry which will be always in demand, whether there are economic, uh, you know, uh, vagaries or even if lockdowns, uh, but because people will always require, you know, this is a basic necessity. So that is why I think we are better placed against those who are in luxury segment or even, uh, yeah. Right. Th thanks, thanks, Shekha. Which actually uh, gets me to you, Jayant. I mean, uh, VLCC is one of the companies which straddles the entire gamut of beauty and wellness. Uh, it actually operates uh, a lot in the physical uh, space as well with your salons and all that. So uh, what has been the impact on your business and how are you coping with it today? Well, thank you, Manoj. Uh, first is good afternoon, all you beautiful people. And I hope you and your families are well. Needless to say, in this environment, first stay safe and then everything else will follow. Uh, Manoj, like Professor Karna mentioned, we have got three lines of businesses. We have our wellness services in South Asia and Middle East Africa. We have our skill development services in India and the personal care products in India. I think all of them were impacted. This is something which none of us had ever planned for in the century, but to varying degrees. So I think we use this as an opportunity in three or four different manners. First is, I must say that the management team perhaps saw it coming a bit earlier, maybe a couple of days earlier. So we did plan for this crisis, let's say, from third week of March. We did not have any idea on where it'll go and 120 days going and counting, but we knew it is going to have a shutdown. Because the news about lockdown had started by that time and our business is very brick and mortar to that extent as well. So we did three or four different things. We first ensured that we come out with a strategy to stay connected with our existing customers in all our streams. So if it was wellness services, we ensured that through online, through home services, through counseling, we, are in, we stay connected with our customers. And therefore, whether it was DIY, whether it was counseling over Zoom, whether it was video consultation, whether it was sending the therapist to their houses, we tried keeping it live. The second thing which we did 
for example, in wellness services was to ensure that we get ourselves ready in terms of safety protocols, in terms of contactless kind of a service, in terms of hygiene. I wouldn't say like operation theater, but almost like a mother's womb. Then the business also focused on saying, after all this is done, when the customer comes back, there'll be a heightened need for immunity boosting services. There'll be a heightened need for weight management, which the customer would have gotten. So I think the teams were smart enough. And because we stayed in touch with the customer, we were able to devise services, which we are now executing as the country is opening up to ensure that we still remain as the first choice for the brand. The experience has been a mixed bag because I can't say that it has still opened up fully. Even as we are speaking now and in certain states, there is still some closure which is going on. But that is about India. I must say Middle East, which for example, I think conquered this entire scare uh, in advance compared to India, 90-95% of our business is already back and counting. So this was in services. In products, we were very clear that we are going to get into a launch of a wide range of IT products. And we pivoted our entire manufacturing and sales and distribution organization to see that everything to do with hygiene, hand sanitizers, hand washes, face washes, we are the first one off the block. So that helped us in that manner as well. In skill development, we advanced our timelines to launch blended lending, uh, learning protocol, wherein the theory and demo portions, which are typically 40% of the course curriculum of any of our entry level or skill upgradation course are now taken online. And we, for practice, we have opened up our centers wherein the student can still go. So the whole objective was to see to the best extent possible, we maintain a seamless service. Obviously, it has not been so easy, but I think it has made us more, much more humble, much more grounded. We actually used all the capacity which we had when the customer was not there to upgrade our training, especially the soft skills of servicing the customer. So we use this time to do whatever business we could, but we use this time very assertively to take care of the tomorrow. Well, that's 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 great uh, news, Jayant. And I think uh, people who are listening to to you would actually get a lot of inspiration. You know, you said about uh, being nimble-footed, being uh, in touch with the consumers, innovating. You know, using this time productively, which gets me to Stan. I mean, uh, you you have uh, uh, you know seen the world from from let's say from Paris, you're looking from things from outside, uh, outside India for, for that matter. Uh, do you see these global trends which are emerging? You know, are they sort of um, uh, something in line with what Jayant is already acting upon? Or are there some trends which you would like to share with us which you are seeing from, from where you sit? Um, thanks Manoj and um, hi everyone. Um, um... It's very interesting to listen to uh, Shika and uh, the, what Jan said. Uh, basically, what I can share is uh, um, the kind of strong belief that uh, trends which were uh, kind of anticipated uh, only uh, accelerated and that uh, uh, it's a start. Uh, it, it's going to be uh, even faster uh, as the lockdown uh, uh, loosens and uh, um, um, so I fully agree on that. Uh, just a few facts, maybe uh, we've been working. We're we're working on the, on the white paper, on the scientific paper on that. We've been working with uh, with an app uh, uh, in uh, in uh, Europe, which is called the uh, uh, INC uh, uh, Beauty. So I N C I, like uh, ingredient listing. Uh, and and we've we've just I mean we are in the middle of data crunching like uh, 50 million data uh, searches from uh, consumers uh, uh, at home on their app uh, for uh, uh, product composition product ingredients actually uh, so we we what we have noticed is that. Uh, uh, um, uh, on a trend which was quite good in 2020 compared to 2019, there was obviously a huge drop, like uh, a, a stock exchange drop, like the one, the curve you see when you look at the stock exchange on a bad day, 
a huge drop in searches, uh, even though pe people were from home, as if everyone got a huge shock. Um, that lasted for a few days and quickly it recovered. And uh, the number of searches uh, on this app is now uh, way over uh, 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 what we had in, uh, in 2019. So there are a few lessons to take from it. The first lesson is that uh, um, uh, people, even when they're at home, are uh, more and more questioning uh, the products they're using, uh, uh, the, the composition of the products, um, and that uh, uh, trend that we see uh, uh, accelerating. Uh, the second aspect that we see, uh, which I reckon is the same uh, in India and what the giant said, uh, all the products which are related to uh, uh, prevention, uh, self-care, uh, uh, um, have uh, uh, developed in terms of the number of searches uh, uh, much uh, stronger than, uh, for example, uh, um, the overall skincare, even though skincare has developed much better than fragrance and uh, makeup, which have dropped. Uh, and obviously, uh, in Europe currently, uh, the sun season uh, 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 is about to come, uh, or we are now in the middle of, and, um, and the season in terms of number of searches, you have, as if people, you have the feeling that people are thinking about something else, actually. So, uh, uh, um, on top of uh, uh, questioning the product composition uh, increasingly, People are into uh, uh, self-care, uh, wanting to take care of, them, of themselves, even when they're at home. And the, the type of product they are looking for is really uh, uh, showing a trend which was to be anticipated, but which is uh, uh, strongly uh, accelerating. Um, and I would say, uh, but this time not based on this uh, 50 million uh, uh, data crunching uh, searches, more on, I would say, a macro and sociological trends. Uh, we have seen, and we may uh, address this point again during the conversation, but the, the point uh, uh, what uh, uh, Shika mentioned on ethics, uh, uh, what the brand stands for, um, uh, people, consumers are more and more searching for that. And we've seen that uh, uh, hugely with what happened in the US and which spread around the world with Black Lives Matter. And uh, I would say that uh, 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 where we have maybe a question mark, but we think that long term it should accelerate, but I don't think that the trend uh, uh, and the crisis uh, uh, gave a clear signal on that. It's personalization. So for us, uh, uh, based on uh, your question, uh, Manoj, uh, it's difficult to answer if this crisis accelerated or just stabilize the, the need for more personalization. Uh, uh, um, I, 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 can't say, uh, I can't say at this, uh, at this stage, but the acceleration, uh, what we see, what we've seen in, uh, in uh, Europe uh, where uh, lockdown has stopped uh, a few weeks back, the acceleration uh, at the consumer or corporate level is, uh, is huge, like uh, could not be imagined at that pace actually. Okay. No, that, that's, that's great, uh, Stan. I think uh, what, what you mentioned about uh, authenticity, uh, prevention, uh, you know, uh, wanting to know what is inside, you know, the ingredients which are inside the products. Uh, so people are searching and uh, which brings me to Subodh, you know, uh, this is a lot of it is happening in the, in the uh, beauty industry, which seems to have parallels in the healthcare industry as well, in the wellness industry, which you handle. Uh, so what is your uh, experience in India and international markets on the changing consumer trends in this period? So I think, Manoj, um, th thanks, thanks for that. Uh, Stan's covered some of that, and I think the other panelists have also touched upon it. I think the big one, let, let me come at this at a slightly different standpoint. You know, if you go back about 10 years, there was another major global crisis, right? When we had the financial crisis in the late 2008, 2009 period, which happened. At that point of time, the consumers were looking for value. They were saying, okay, I've got a financial impact. Tell me what the brands, the products can do to provide greater value. 
I think the big shift that we've seen in this current crisis is that consumers are, are asking, tell me why, why should I use you? What is the goodness that is coming from this? So I think from value to goodness, I think is one huge trend that we're seeing. And I think this trend was already there, but I think it's just gotten accelerated. I think the other trend that we're seeing, which has definitely in the health and wellness space gotten accelerated during this period is about self-care, right? Today, as a consumer, as a patient, I'm really hesitant to go meet a healthcare practitioner, go to a hospital or whatever. And I want to do everything, not just to prevent myself from the COVID scare, but also from all the other diseases that, you know, my lifestyle could have brought upon me or whatever. So I think the whole self-care is one massive trend that was already there. I think given with the awareness, with the advent of the internet, now Dr. Google and all of that, I think it's just gotten significantly accelerated du during this period. I think what has also brought about some of this and what is aiding the consumers is, you know, we've talked about natural, obviously the whole clean label, uh, which we're seeing in the West. I don't want chemicals, I don't want anything. I want as few things in it as possible. I think are things which we are definitely seeing, which are coming up uh, as a trend. Um, I think one very interesting space where beauty and wellness actually kind of fuse and meet is the whole beauty from within space. That's one area which we're seeing significantly accelerate. Consumers don't want just surface beauty anymore, right? I want to feel well and I want that my persona to actually signify that. So I think the beauty from within, I think is definitely one trend that I think the wellness space is taking very well and I think definitely uh, 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 accelerating on that. I think on the behavior side, one of the trends and I think Shikha talked about it already in her business, she's saying the whole online, I think that is something that is accelerating. It's, it's not just now about access, it's now about this is the way of convenience moving forward. So I think earlier it was another channel. I think now it's so embedded in consumer behavior and action that I think they don't, they, they don't think about it, it's more reflective, right? It's, it's a reflex action, I want something, I can go online, I can search for it. And I think Stan talked about that. I think what comes allied with it is the whole research. So I think brands need to tell consumers, why is this good for you? And not just from a manufacturer standpoint, okay? But also from a very objective and neutral standpoint to be authentic and credible as coming out across to consumers. And that is something which in the health and wellness space is especially even more important. Yeah, Th thanks to both. I think uh, this is this is very interesting, and you does, did touch upon the fact that uh, beauty and wellness getting to a space. You know, at one end there is a uh, authenticity required, then the issue about beauty from within, which brings me to the next uh, point, which I really want to ask Stan. Uh, you know, I I went through a recent uh, Ipsos survey, which uh, was done across twenty seven countries, including India. And uh, the consumer said that the top four attributes for uh, which make, uh, make someone beautiful are uh, surprise, surprise, at least to me, were happiness, kindness, dignity, and confidence. And uh, when I went on to look at the list, you know, uh, makeup and cosmetics are actually rated at the bottom of the list. So, uh, the question I want to ask you, Stan, you, you started your career uh, many years ago. You were in L'Oreal, a beauty company, and then it's, you know, the concept of beauty seems to have moved over years of your, in your career. Uh, and uh, do you see that happening? Have you seen it happening in front of your eyes or has it just got accelerated right now? And if the external beauty is going to be so undervalued, does that mean that the current beauty market, the size of the market is going to come down? I mean, is the growth going to come down? How do you see this interpretation of beauty? Um, so, 
very interesting, um, and it, it's it's a good sign. Uh, it's a good message, uh, uh, basically, that uh, people uh, think and reckon that beauty comes from people, uh, basically. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a very strong message uh, um, uh, in in a period where uh, uh, we may be stressed by each other, where tech is playing a huge part, a huge role, and so on. So the fact that uh, the human touch is uh, is uh, playing a big role is uh, is uh, is key, and uh, and I would say that uh, that uh, that's a big sign. Uh, uh, but as you said, does it mean that uh, the size of the market will uh, will decrease? Um, uh, honestly, the the uh, this trend of the beauty coming from within. within uh, uh, we see it accelerating uh, 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 probably as the world is getting more diverse in terms of its uh, uh, culture origin. Uh, by the way, uh, I think that uh, uh, Asia is uh, 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 impacting uh, in, uh, in a stronger way um, uh, uh, the way people think about themselves, about the relationship with the others, and therefore about the way they consume and what they consume. Uh, um, um, that's one uh, one aspect. Uh, um, there is as well the, the uh, climate uh, uh, factor, which is uh, 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 huge, uh, and 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 the younger generation is accelerating the uh, 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 consciousness uh, uh, of uh, what's going to happen if uh, nothing is done. So if you don't respect uh, uh, um, the environment. Um, that uh, uh, value, which once again, when I started with L'Oréal, uh, I remember there was one guy who was head of uh, sustainable development, a German guy, uh, uh, very respected. But the acceleration, uh, 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 and by the way, uh, the acceleration uh, right after the crisis is uh, is huge, uh, which doesn't mean that everything is solved, but the acceleration is, is huge. I, I, I think that uh, uh, to answer your question uh, and to try to see a bit of uh, light in what's happening and how the, um, the, the, the market could be structured tomorrow. Um, first of all, I think we have in the previous, uh, in your previous question, we all have answered, uh, 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 I think, quite a few uh, points on what categories are going to uh, to be uh, uh, bigger than the others. And I think the two categories which are usually challenged is makeup and uh, fragrances. Uh, uh, categories about prevention and skincare are developing. Uh, 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 and by the way, uh, uh, skincare developing uh, uh, partly answers your question about the size of the market, but I may uh, come back on that right after. Then, uh, um, in terms of structure of the market, obviously, what are the channels of distribution? In the industry, currently, people anticipate that uh, 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 the, the COVID crisis will accelerate the 50-50 the, uh, split between offline and online as a structural uh, level. Uh, um, so I think we can anticipate uh, e-commerce to play a bigger role, and that's a huge challenge for a lot of stores, by the way. Uh, meaning that a lot of people will have to reinvent themselves. So I think the human touch, the human part will be key. And I, I, I really appreciated the giant uh, introduction at the very beginning of this uh, uh, answer previously to start with the human touch is, uh, is uh, fundamental. And that's uh, why we are all uh, here uh, today and why we are waking up every morning. Um, I, I truly believe in terms of uh, how the market is going to be shaped tomorrow, that uh, trust and inclusivity are major challenges for the industry and for the specific uh, uh, wellness and uh, dermocosmetic industry. Uh, 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 these two points, trust and inclusivity, are huge. And, and behind that, you have uh, the questioning about, the, uh, as uh, Subot mentioned, about uh, uh, composition, chemicals, and uh, personalization. I don't know if you saw, but last week uh, there was, or maybe earlier this week actually, uh, Procter and Gamble uh, filed a lawsuit in Australia against Colgate on a claim for whitening teeth. Uh, uh, 
saying that uh, Proctor uh, uh, claiming that Colgate actually uh, claims was too strong, not actually to question the, 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 the strength of the, the consumer in his trust about the potential of uh, uh, this kind of product to whiten uh, teeth. And I think it's very important because the way the lawsuit is filed is actually on trust. So I totally uh, and strongly believe that trust and transparency uh, will uh, evolve uh, uh, drastically after the, the crisis. And then, um, uh, uh, Manoj, you know, it's, uh, it's a topic which uh, I reckon is going to be a major shift in the, in the market. And that may as well um, uh, show who are the losers uh, uh, going to be and who are the winners going to be. There is a shift of power and the power is moving to the consumer. Uh, 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 what percentage? Hard to say, but it is happening and uh, it is a fantastic opportunity, which uh, led by digital concerns us, by the way, as consumers and as well as citizens. Hence, I think the uh, uh, the challenge on the human side of our brands and of our tech as well, because I'm a tech guy. So uh, when you speak about human touch, I am uh, 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 very directly uh, challenged uh, uh, and that's going to play a big role. And to finally answer your question about the size of the market, difficult for me to say. The only thing yeah. I could answer, uh, Manoj, is that I strongly believe, and that's uh, the education I got from L'Oréal, uh, uh, less is more, um, and we are creative to uh, to be better than the competition, and we are creative to uh, uh, involve consumers in uh, uh, new product development, new service development. I think service is going to play a huge role yeah. in terms of size of the market. So uh, uh, quite optimistic about the size of the market. I wouldn't see it as a, as a decreasing uh, market. At yeah, I, I think I think you're right, uh, Stan. I mean, basically, consumers. It's not about which category uh, they go to. Some categories may take a back seat, but there will be some other solutions which will come in. And the consumer always wants to, as Subodh and you've been saying, you know, wants to feel well from inside. There are new solutions which will be there, which actually brings me to Jayant. And Jayant, you must be actually wondering what is the debate going on because I think your company has uh, actually always thought of beauty and wellness to be two sides of the same coin. And I, I can see that in your product offerings and all that, and you've been looking at consumers holistically. So in the wellness space, you know, when you are looking at it and when we talk of wellness now, we are talking of mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, you know, entire wellness gamut and, you know, linking it to beauty. So what are the things which you are going to do or what you think are going to be the future, uh, you know, areas uh, for your company to, to really execute? No, thanks, Manoj. A very insightful question. And I think whether you are a consumer of this industry or an operator or just a keen industry watcher, I'm sure this is a question which is going through in all our minds. Uh, but just allow me uh, to go back a minute. And you mentioned about the survey which looked at happiness, kindness, dignity, and confidence. And that is where I just want to relate a small anecdote based on what Stan had said. I don't know how many of us have had the fortune of meeting the founder and co-chairperson of uh, ELCC group, uh, Mrs. Vandana Lutra. But for example, every employee coming in, and especially the customer touching employee, there is an anecdote which he tells everybody. And I just thought I'll share it because it is so, so true today. She gained a very valuable consumer insight from the early days of starting her business and, address, and addressing, which has been the cornerstone of our success to date. She recognized that at the fundamental level, customers seek beauty and weight management solutions, not just because they want to look better, but because they wanted to have a better self-image, gain confidence in themselves. And that is why for the last two decades, we have had a tagline, shaping your confidence as a part of the logo. I think what Stan talked about, I think Subodh mentioned, looking good, feeling good, staying good. Beauty, wellness, preventive, proactive healthcare. I think the boundaries are merging. And I think beauty and wellness that way is two sides of the same coin. I definitely think 
there is convergence taking place at a certain level wherein for example in skin treatments manoj the wellness interpretation is taking over and this is in response to your question wherein offering and solutions are moving away from beautiful to healthy skin then there is emergence of products like skin health supplements and nutraceuticals improving beauty from within which subodh mentioned a minute back which i think is very very live another interpretation of wellness influencing the beauty business is the move again towards clean beauty green beauty both for ingredients in beauty products and usage of consumables in the professional beauty treatment so finally there is a resurgence and revival of ayurveda related beauty products and treatments it's really interesting to note that here the concept of wellness as beauty may have recently taken over or we are talking about it now in the industry but it's actually 5000 year old and stems from ayurveda so it is the wheel has taken it it required this kind of a pandemic for the earth to move on its head and we are back where we started so well that is destiny that is god's way of saying stay humble stay grounded don't abuse mother nature i am watching so so jay i think i think from what you said uh, there are two questions uh, which are emerging and i'm going to ask the first one uh, to shikha uh, you know what what jen's been uh, also actually uh, he said he's talked about this uh, clean uh, you know products natural products and uh, you know there is also a lot of evidence that uh, consumers today are becoming more conscious uh, stan mentioned they're looking at the ingredients and uh, you know all that so what you you are at the operating end of this right and it's very nice to say that consumers want clean products they want natural products but what are the challenges uh, for a business to deliver uh, you know natural clean products uh, to the to the consumers yeah i think surely now people are you know demanding natural and clean products in the and also green packaging so uh, people rather identify with their ideologies of using no plastic reusable packaging chemical free products so this signifies a very huge shift in the people's consciousness from being self centered consumers to being environmentally conscious consumers and this surely is a very positive change however uh, you know any new information is always half baked and uh, you know many a times leads to misjudgments and wrong selections of the products and even packaging trends so uh, you know we uh, also uh, being the uh, in this industry we receive a lot of sometimes complaints sometimes inquiries from the conscious customers like why do you put lye in the soap why if and lye is a chemical why don't you make soap without lye and why are you putting chemical preservatives in the cream why not use natural preservative why are you wrapping the products in plastic and why not just you know paper so and why are you using plastic bottles instead of you know glass bottles so this is all good that people are being concerned on these you know issues however if there needs to be a deeper delving uh you know on these issues rather than just adop- adopting very simplistic approaches on these issues which are not going to be sustainable in the long run so for example like using glass bottles instead of uh, plastic bottle is not a solution because uh glass you know it gets decomposed in 1 million years and it's very difficult to sort and recycle while plastic takes 1000 years so and it is much easier to you know Uh, recycle plastic so that is why uh, but people won't understand this uh, very easily so that is why people need to be now it's the onus of the uh, organizations who are you know manufacturing because they are seeing the practical implement practical uh, impacts of the solutions that are being proposed so they it's their onus to educate the customers as well not just you know uh, maybe Uh, fulfill their demands and expectations of green packaging and all and for the sake of pra- uh, for the sake of profit but rather actually uh, educate them and uh, help them see the wider uh, you know impacts of their actions yeah that's yeah I, th- i think that's a great point shikha because the balancing of uh, natural with sustainability with yes. safety with the with the trade offs which is required you know 
uh, that it itself will be an ecosystem challenge uh, going forward to meet the needs of the consumers. But, but the second thing which I wanted to ask, which uh, Jayant had mentioned about the 5,000 year old Ayurveda traditions and you know the, the, the thing about holistic wellness, as we say, uh, is actually something which is uh, you know, very Indian. Uh, and uh, I wanted to ask you this question that how do you think, you know, how do you see these opportunities of uh, this, uh, these uh, Ayurvedic products and products which are basically from so many years of Indian and East, uh, you know, experience from East, uh, actually getting acceptance in the international markets? Uh, are there export opportunities for a lot of people today? Oh, so um, absolutely. I think if there's one thing that we're seeing and, you know, in our in our business in the US particularly, but also across other markets is the world is becoming very aware of Ayurveda, not Ayurveda in the herbal sense, but Ayurveda is Ayurveda with its authenticity, with its cures from 5,000 years ago. And, you know, today, if you went into, so, if you were in the US five years ago, okay, the only place you could find Ayurvedic product is if you went to Whole Foods, right? You went to Whole Foods, you would see. Today, you can even walk down an aisle of Walmart and you will see Ayurvedic products in the true form, just pure ashwagandha, just pure shatavari, just single herbs in bottles, even in the aisles of Walmart, which caters to the more, most mass of American consumers. So we're clearly seeing this. A, a, an example which is you know, very personal, um, we have a brand of pain management, which is, an, which is a cream, a joint pain cream called Jointplex, which we've just launched in India about a year ago, but it's a brand which has been in the US about 20 years plus. We acquired it a few years ago. We just launched a version of it, and believe it or not, we launched it during the COVID period. The first shipment happened in March, April, with natural turmeric. And we are surprised as to how its acceptance has been. It's the only product and brand we know which in the first shot, every single big retailer in the US took from us. It's in Walmart, it's in Walgreens, it's in CVS, it's in Kroger, you name it and we have it. And within the first two months, we've seen it outsell the base SQ, which has been there for 20 years. And we didn't need to go explain turmeric to the consumers. They know they were, uh, you know, very, very familiar with it. So I think the one thing and, you know, the traditional Chinese medicine uh, sellers and manufacturers have been doing so well over the years is creating that market. I don't think we've done a greatest job with Ayurveda. I think this is the time we have two great exports from India, right? Indian food has become so popular over the years. So people understand India, they understand regions of India. Yoga, and Stan talked about it, right, is now so popular. I mean, there are different facets of yoga which are practiced all over the world. I think Ayurveda can really tap into that trend, particularly with yoga, and be able to be a great export from India. I think the opportunities are endless, and this is the time for Indian manufacturers and companies to really take. That, thanks, thanks, Subodh. I mean, that's that's a great point, and I think the other point, which you, which I guess, uh, you know, what our ancient teaching tells us is that as you age, you don't have to look younger than your age. You have to age gracefully, and I think that's also a trend which I'm seeing, uh, you know, in international markets uh, too, right? Yes, absolutely. And I think what what one example which is which is fantastic is uh, uh, what we're seeing is in supplements, particularly age-related supplements, specifically targeting women, which so far were never there. I mean, today you can walk into aisles and see a well woman 50 plus or a well woman 70 plus. This would never happen five years ago because it was women were always marketed to from a beauty perspective. You had to look younger. But today the female consumer is telling us, I want to look a well-maintained, uh, a well-feeling, and a healthy version of my own age. If I'm 50, I don't want to look like a 30, but I want to look like a very fit, very well, healthy 50-year-old. And we see manufacturers wake up to that reality and you know, have these supplements and all products with them. 
I think Stan was, wants to make a point yeah. to say. So. And, and, and actually, Stan, I also want to hear from you. The building on this, what are the tensions which you see likely coming in when the wellness and beauty, uh, you know, businesses start uh, converging? Yeah, I'll answer your question. Can I ask a question yeah. to Subot first? Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. No, I was I was interested by the the the, the success of the product in the US. Uh, uh, what do you anticipate in terms to come back on uh, Manoj's question before, which is how is the size of the market going to evolve? Uh, uh, how is the pricing of those uh, new products, new ranges, in terms of uh, is it more expensive? Is it same price? I mean, can you create value from it, or how how is it? It it is more expensive. It is twenty five percent more expensive but consumers are willing to pay it. If they see value, I think they are absolutely willing to pay for it. And I think the uh, value proposition has to be authentic. Yeah. If you're putting something which is out there for the sake of it, the consumer will see through it. It has to be authentic. Then I think that creates, that authenticity creates trust and that trust brings value. Mm -hmm. so I think yeah. that cycle is very important. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Less is more. <laughs> Less um, is more. Cool. So Stan, that same question, you know, again, may I'll just repeat. Well, the, you know, I, I hear that beauty and wellness, they're converging if you are well from, you know, if you're beautiful uh, from inside because you're well from inside. But maybe I may not be well. I mean, I, I may be not physically fit. Does that mean I will not feel beautiful? I mean, isn't there a tension which is going to be created if everything is going to be from within and wellness becomes the new benchmark for beauty? Um, um, I think to yeah to answer your question, it's it's complicated because uh, we have to be uh, humble about uh, uh, some trends which we see and we 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 strongly believe in it, and some uh, uh, insight or trends we get. And, and, and I would say a change of uh, habits of uh, consumers or patients, and on which it's difficult to exactly know in which direction it's gonna go. But uh, um, uh, if I take it from my uh, uh, perspective, where tech uh, uh, plays a big role, uh, um, the, the tension uh, between uh, wellness, uh, beauty, and health uh, is uh, uh, um, uh, 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 a big tension for an entrepreneur uh, uh, and maybe for a consumer uh, uh, and patient. Uh, um, I, I could relate it as well to uh, uh, your question between, uh, as you said uh, uh, from this uh, uh, survey, uh, um, beauty is very human. Uh, and tech is by definition and health is a bit less human. Uh, uh, if I may say it this way, uh, uh, take it uh, uh, precaution, with precaution. But uh, I think that uh, um, what we see is that tech and data actually uh, uh, is going to, um, as mentioned earlier on, to give more uh, power to uh, uh, the user, to the patient, to the consumer, and uh, uh, the consumer is going to know more about uh, ingredients, to understand a lot better uh, what's happening uh, uh, in the manufacturing process. Uh, as uh, uh, Shika said, uh, 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 the composition of the packaging as well. So uh, consumers uh, uh, are a lot more aware now than they were uh, 10 years back uh, and five years back. And uh, I think, as you said, the uh, manage is going to create a, a, a new kind of tension. And I think the one between health and beauty, I can't answer it, uh, to be honest, totally at this stage, because I think it's a whole process. But uh, tech is going to uh, create some bridges between, uh, uh, and Shika has a question, uh, 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 to create some bridges between uh, uh, both uh, uh, universities. Uh, uh, and potentially, uh, human can be part of the answer, but I think we're all learning and listening very hard and experiencing uh, on uh, what people want and what experience they want to, uh, to have. 
okay no no this is this is great uh, stan and uh, shikha you had a question right uh, i don't have a question i actually wanted to speak a little bit on beauty from within yes, if i am allowed to <laughs> yes. okay so i think you know we uh, have to understand this concept of beauty from within little more so i think it has to do more not with physical well being uh, not of the body and the mind it's about recognizing something beyond the body and the mind it's a spiritual well being uh, you know uh, what the happiness and the peace are not the things of the body and mind i guess i think it is rather something beyond so it doesn't matter whether we have some physical ailment or we have we are suffering from some disease a person who is loving a person who is kind a person who is uh, you know more aware of the soul within uh, is a uh, a person who is very beautiful from within uh, in spite of being you know physically unwell it, that doesn't really matter he might be suffering from cancer but if he's a kind hearted person and if he uh, is aware of uh you know his soul and his which because the soul is something which is unaffected by all the outer factors and uh, that is something which is like a screen on which all our outer life is playing out and that screen remains totally uh, you know if that screen is clear and if we are aware of that unaffected part within us which leads to the peace and the happiness so that is what i think is uh, you know the beauty from within that 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 is an amazing uh, uh, you know insight uh, shweta and i think mm -hmm. sorry shikha and and this is where uh, the the thing about uh, you know we talk about ayurveda we talk about products but you talk about meditation you talk about spirituality and bringing this into the realm of beauty Uh, i think is something again we can uh, work towards uh, you know as as is east has given lot of those solutions bringing spiritual beauty into the conversation spiritual wellness leading to that particular uh, comment which you made is, is a great build on this um, let me just um, uh, just make sure that uh, we uh, are not neglecting uh, men in the discussion somehow when uh, beauty uh, conversations happen and you know somehow we use another word called grooming to describe uh, men because men are not supposed to be beautiful you know they are well groomed so i want to ask jayan that uh, in the space uh, you know in which you operate uh, the equivalent of beauty being grooming and wellness being being common i guess uh, how do you see uh, see the youth of today in india particularly uh, embracing beauty and wellness uh, in 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 this context well thanks i think uh, i'm sure we all see it as we walk along and we see it in our family members and near and dear ones uh, but i can just say when vlc vlc st started about 30 years ago over 90% of our customer base was women fast forward to today 40% of our customer base for wellness and beauty services are men and this is not a case just in india but across all geographies we operate whether it is bangladesh sri lanka gcc region or even uh, kenya especially in the last 5 to 7 years male customers are steadily moving up the service sophistication scale where in 8 to 10 years ago the males were largely frequenting our wellness centers for basic grooming services but now we see they are increasingly opting for skin treatments for anti aging minimally invasive aesthetic dermatology solutions like fillers thread lifts platelet rich plasma treatments and even laser hair removal services for beard shaping also the trend youth is now taking it for example i would say my own example if 25 years back somebody would have told me go and get a manicure pedicure done i would have said are you calling me a sissy but now i think it's a very dumb thing now i think the youth the millennials do realize that it is not about just beauty it is wellness it is proactive health service it is immunity boosting so i'll just say it's a 360 degrees i think the penetration levels are increasing exponentially and we are still at the tip of the iceberg okay so so this this is great now let me just move away from the consumer behaviors and what opportunities it's coming up into 
uh, where this is happening, a shift which is happening where consumers are actually spending more time at home. And uh, it looks to me that, uh, you know, even when they will be, uh, you know, economy would open up and all, a lot more time will be spent at home. So does that sort of, uh, you know, uh, for, uh, uh, you know, let me ask this question to Subodh first, that uh, do you think that the industry needs to become proactive for, uh, uh, you know, looking at home as the new opportunity for, uh, let's say, wellness? Oh, absolutely. I think what's going to happen is you are going to see a lot more um, allied industries come up, right? I think one of the uh, industries which is very quickly getting on to this trend and using it perhaps better than uh, uh, some of the other one is probably the furniture industry, right? I mean, you, you see now chairs being sold because you're going to spend more time being home and already talking to consumers about your posture being right, right? Because you're spending so much time at home and you don't have to save work chairs, for example, right? I think those are trends which are definitely going to come from a whole, maybe just a physical point, but I think overall uh, you're spending time at home. Uh, there are obviously other pressures at home. So your mental wellness, your mental well-being is going to come into play there. So I think there's a whole host of things which is going to be there. I think it opens up lots of questions, but it also opens up lots of opportunities. So for example, how can um, manufacturers, how can brands look at on-demand services, right? If I'm at home and obviously I'm not going out, how can the same experience be brought home to me? I think that is a trend that is definitely going to come in. Wellness so far, right? There's, there's been health has been around the product side of it. But I think a lot of services are coming up, right? Whether you look at now uh, your well-being services around yoga, your meditation services, your spirituality services. Are in. So I think in the on-demand service industry, I think is the one industry that's definitely going to see a significant increase. I think consumers are going to start demanding a fusion of services. I think I don't want to have 10 people come into my home. So how can you offer me everything that I that I need? So if the fusion of beauty and wellness is going to continue down this track, I think it's going to open up an opportunity to have a more consolidated offering being given to the consumer uh, at the same time and place. So I think there are lots of opportunities. I think it's too early in the cycle, but I think the companies and brands which address it first will have a for, first mover advantage. There are brands who are going to come with the learning and everything. But the first mover advantage in this is going to be critical. So, so that's a, that's a great, uh, great uh, uh, insight, uh, Subodh. Because you know, uh, Stan, you are actually your company, which you know, uh, Wired Beauty, is anyway working on such solutions which people can use from wherever, including home, right? And uh, as you said, measurement is becoming an important way for consumers to know. Uh, so, what is something? I mean, give a, give us a few examples of. What is the future of technology in terms of products or services which can consumers can use wherever they are? Yes. Um, thanks for the question. Uh, um, and um, uh, we believe, um, and we have a bit of uh, uh, feedback since uh, we started uh, uh, four years back on uh, on uh, what we call beauty tech now, which didn't have a name at that time, that uh, tech can help uh, change uh, behavior. Uh, I'll give you three examples. Uh, one example is obviously, we all know it, uh, our uh, smart watches, which uh, if you were asking uh, two, three, five years back to anyone how many steps they had to walk every day to be fit, no one would be able to answer. Today, you need most people know it's 10,000. Uh, 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 which doesn't mean that most people have not left the hardware into a locker after, but at least they've changed their mind and they've changed their behavior based on tech, based on data, based on an information, a neutral information. The second example is when you look at COVID, uh, uh, one way to uh, lead to push, to be proactive into prevention is to take temperature and you need the hardware for that. So 
I truly believe that hardware in tech can help change behavior thanks to a neutral, independent, and user-owned uh, uh, data. Uh, uh, we have run the experiments within our company with uh, sun exposure, and we have uh, um, identified that by using a hardware that delivers you information in real time and in real life about your uh, percentage of uh, daily maximum sun exposure based on your skin and based on the sun, this data helps you and makes you change your behavior in terms of uh, I go to in the shadow or I apply more sunscreen. So it's a totally different approach and away from a top-down marketing approach into a, a user-centric, uh, user-generated uh, 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 behavior change. And that has an impact on uh, uh, um, the products which are being used, when, how, and what type of products, by the way, because it's a change of uh, a mentality, total change of, uh, of mentality. Okay, so well, that's, that's great. Uh, I think what, what you can measure is what, what tells you, you know, what so solutions you need to take. And uh, so both you have something to add. Yeah, just, just a quick point. I think just taking on from Stan's point, I think the one industry also, which is, perhaps going to emerge is already there in its nascency is home diagnostics. So far, diagnostics industry has just been around lifestyle diseases and all. I think the diagnostics industry is going to recognize the wellness trend and come into that very, very strongly. So I think that is another opportunity area, particularly for startups looking to come into this space. And, and, and Jayant, uh, what, what is uh, VLCC doing going to homes, uh, you know, for wellness and beauty? No, absolutely. I think uh, the brand has to be what the customer needs and it has got to be a seamless experience. And given what has happened, I would say the last 110 days has given, has fast forwarded a consumer behavior by 110 weeks, if not more, in terms of digital adoption, usage of technology, etc., etc. I can just say, I don't know how much we have done on a scale of 0 to 10. But I think VLCC has been there as well as you're asking for the customer. So we have our on-demand beauty services at home through Vanity Cube. We have invested very many more resources over there from the traditional centers we have. We have delivery of nutraceuticals at home through our VLCC Well Science direct selling network, which is part of our omni-channel approach. We have historically has had facial kits in which we are market leaders in do-it-yourself, three to six steps. We obviously e-commerce, personal care products, and like I shared earlier, delivery of blended learning through online teaching of theory and demo component of the skill development courses. So I think that we have, it's all about being nimble, all about being frugal and adding value. Because whatever one is doing, one has to ensure that there is efficacy, it is safe, it is natural, it is sustainable. And that is where the brand actually remains, whatever brand it is, that is where the equity becomes strong. Thanks, 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 uh, Jayant. Uh, just moving to the, the uh, other part about uh, if the consumer's changing, they are looking at different products, they are actually also, you know, staying at home, they are connecting with digital in a different way. So what is the change uh, which we are seeing in communicating uh, about beauty and wellness, you know, benefits or brands? How will the brands communicate with them? Uh, are there going to be any changes in the way they communicate? So what do you think, like you are, you already started uh, launching your brands. Will you communicate with them in a different way going forward? Yeah, I, I think, look, traditionally, Manoj and, you know, uh, um, you and I have come from big brand marketing, so to speak. It was a one-way process, right? Manufacturers, brands talked to consumers. It was a push marketing. I think increasingly brands have to put consumers at the center of the conversation. I think it's not a one-way dialogue. It has to be a two-way dialogue. Brands have to listen and brands have to respond. I think we're seeing enough examples today. Social media, one post gets done and that takes everything off it. Right. So I think that's very important. No longer is the manufacturer or the brand, the authority figure and the expert. 
today that hierarchy has been eliminated so i think the brands need to recognize that and that is also one of the reasons we seeing that the smaller brands the challenger brands are coming up much faster because they don't have the legacy that the big brands have of you know be speaking from the top they understand the consumer conversation a lot more so that consumer dialogue i think is the one significant change that has to come the second one over and above all and i think stan said that well artificial intelligence you've got to use that you've got to employ the tech tools use machine learning use artificial intelligence i think these two to me are the most significant changes shekhar you were saying you wanted to say something about uh, i i saw this uh, about uh, when sobodh was talking about marketing because you don't do any marketing and still you have a uh, such a good uh, you know authentic brand out there but in the future are you going to reach out to consumers to spread the message yeah i think i would uh, speak a little about uh, introduce a little about what we are so we are a rural women's uh, enterprise we have around 40 to 50 rural women we uh, cultivate our own herbs and we have around 150 products which are all based on ayurveda and aromatherapy formulations and uh, the Uh, so we don't use much of chemicals uh, like a minimum possible and everything is made by hand and uh, all the traditional processes of making so uh, yeah and as uh, we said uh, we uh, at the heart is the spirituality uh, aspect and the social aspect of our organization so we uh, do this more to provide the livelihood in the rural area for the sustainable development of this uh, area and we are into education we are into other a livelihood opportunities for people also so uh, we haven't done much of marketing uh, and as i was sharing a little earlier that you know the only uh, work that has been done uh, we have cosmetic license we are also exporting and uh, we have like enough to you know to sustain ourselves so all every single thing of our organization has been done by human capital we haven't we took a loan of 60000 rupees in 2008 uh, and uh, established our unit in uh, under khadi so 60000 is absolutely nothing but uh, and we have uh, every single thing of our organization has been done by volunteers volunteers from across the world they have come and stayed with us and they have contributed in preparing our product uh, uh, packaging uh, pictures brochures online presence our website we haven't spent anything at all and we haven't marketed whatever marketing has been done has been done by our own school kids and right now also uh, it is being done whatever if you see online presence of us is quite good it's comparable to good brands and it is all done by the college students and uh, so as i said that it's human capital on which our organization is best so yeah that's uh, that's i think shikhar this this is great news for a lot of people who are entrepreneurs the budding entrepreneurs who yeah. are that it doesn't you know if you have an authentic product you have a passion behind it yes go and uh, design it around uh, the consumer needs you know what is what is very important is if you have those right yeah then, uh, you know the word of the message can be spread absolutely so it is a lot of money yeah it's a research that 80% of the sales actual sales happen through word of mouth and not really through advertisements and through you know packaging or anything so we never uh, had any idea of that we'll be becoming a brand or anything we always just you know were passionate about uh, making products which are being demanded by people for the sake of what problems they are having so that is what we addressed and that is how we have survived and i think yeah this is what is uh, everybody is being talking about that you know this is what is required authentic product back to ayurveda back to traditional ways and back to beauty from within yeah thank you shikha uh, stan do you do you see this do you see some resonance in the future of communication the future the way brands will basically talk with consumers yeah i think it's uh, thank you shika it's great and uh, it's amazing i think the one common thing uh, 
on uh, how the relationship between consumers and brands will be affected. To converge on uh, what Chica is saying from a fantastic perspective and maybe from a tech perspective as well, is that people will vote and will choose with their feet. So they will go where they want to go uh, and they will go away from basically where trust is not here. And that will be at the beginning with uh, very hard to uh, decipher. And uh, what I see from a tech perspective is that some players are not going into it or are not changing their true behavior, their true uh, uh, identity. Subot was saying it's a lot more complicated when you've been here for 50 years than when you're, you're, you're a startup. Uh, uh, but uh, consumers are very demanding. They jump into the game in a positive way and sometimes uh, to challenge uh, big time. And I see that from what we said, uh, 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 from the, the sincerity, the truth of uh, Shika's uh, venture and the transparency and the ownership uh, uh, put into the power of the consumer, uh, uh, there is a, a world which is changing in a very optimistic and, uh, and positive way. And, uh, and uh, that, from a European perspective, uh, uh, leaves us very, very uh, hopeful about a changing world. But there will be, uh, there will be people who will be, will be hit hard uh, and very quickly. I think, once again, as we said at the beginning, it is accelerating for the better and for the worse, but uh, hopefully for the better. Thanks, thanks, Stan. Uh, I think um, uh, you know I would just like to uh, uh, you know do what uh, I consider as a rapid fire round now, uh, which is basically uh, if you were to uh, you know give one tip to our audience, and a lot of our people in our, in the audience are uh, young entrepreneurs, and uh, they've either started their business, they are probably thinking whether this is a good time, uh, you know, to start a beauty or a wellness brand. Uh, you know, is it a, something they should be doing, not doing, or if they are already launched, what they should be doing? And if it is only one tip which you had to give them, uh, you know, uh, what would you actually say to them? Uh, and let me start with Jayanth first. Well, well, first is an observation before I answer that tip. I thought I was betting myself the age old phrase which we all know. Beauty lies in the eye of beholder, whether it'll come in the third minute, seventh minute, seventeenth minute, <laughs> but the session is almost ending. And I think beauty does lie in the eye of beholder. And I think the way beauty has been defined as whether spiritual, whether holistic, whether merging, it lies in the eye of beholder. Uh, Manoj, coming to your point, I think uh, an entrepreneur is what entrepreneur does. I can just say I perhaps should have been the last one to be asked this question. I'm a failed entrepreneur myself, also failed in multi-million dollars businesses, but that is besides the point. I would just say, I think Subodh mentioned it, customer centricity, involve your customer in your entire business process from strategization to execution. And that is something which is not a one-off, but it has got to be a continuous journey. I picked up across industries, I would just say speed to market and ensuring you have a plus one. In these times, all chips are down. Everybody is at ground zero. Nobody had anticipated this is going to happen. I could have given you a bet of billion dollars four months back that would the world be locked for four months. I would have got odds of one is to trillion. And I would have won. So everybody is at ground zero. Keep customer centricity, ensure speed, and your plus one based on that customer centricity. Hopefully, you will not fail. Okay, Shikha. Yeah. Okay. I think surely this is the right time to for the budding entrepreneurs to enter into the beauty and wellness uh, industry because it's undergoing a huge transformation in terms of the concept of beauty, the ways of achieving it and as well as in the ways of delivering it. So those who are ab able to deeply understand and grasp the shift which is happening in the people's conception and the requirement, they will surely be able to replace the old players who are well-established. 
And uh, for a modern man or woman, uh, I think beauty is now not about just looking superficially attractive. It is, uh, uh, or just in parties or when you are going out, it is about feeling beautiful all day long, all life long. And it is, it requires that we revisit our traditional natural approach to beauty and wellness. And so my suggestion for the newcomers is to look at the wisdom of the old and learn from it. Well said, Shikha. Look at the wisdom of the old and learn from it. And uh, Stan, what, what is your one tip? Um, if you start from a white piece of paper, I reckon that uh, uh, you should really spend time on top of what I've said. Huh? So I, I won't repeat and I fully agree with what I've said about uh, time to market and, uh, and consumer centricity. Uh, I would focus on two points, which are uh, your strategy. Your strategy needs to be perfectly anticipated and very clear and your business model. There will be a, a new business model appearing on the market. We've addressed a few uh, today. Uh, 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 try to be innovative on your, uh, on your business model. And one way to be innovative, maybe, is to collaborate. I strongly believe in uh, uh, tomorrow's world where uh, bigger companies will get even bigger and so on as a startup, as a, a young entrepreneur, collaborate and uh, together you'll be uh, you'll be stronger okay thanks Stan. so both the last word uh, last word always the always the difficult one um so so my last word would be the opportunity is today that the market has become so fragmented so that means there are so many opportunities that have arisen because newer and newer things are there so the first thing is find that opportunity find differentiation don't become a me too and because the fragmentation of the market has allowed so much opportunity you should be able to find it the second one is and i'm going to differ with stan a little bit on this and you know now having been in a startup world for some time yes spend time on strategy don't overdo it okay strategy is nothing without execution and i would pick up on giant's point and i'm in his camp speed to market so find your differentiation, think about it properly, don't overdo it, but speed to market is what is going to ensure your success. So that would be my mantra. Thanks, thanks, uh, thanks to both. And uh, I think uh, the point with uh, Jayant actually you made was that everyone is at ground zero. I mean, actually everyone is at a starting point. So it's actually the most uh, conducive time for for entrepreneurs, because even the big companies, uh, you know, are uh, going to relook at their business models. And uh, as Shikha said, that you know, this is the time where you can really bring uh, things of passion to the table. Uh, so, with this, uh, I'll just hand it over to Anika. Uh, you know, she has got the list of all your questions, and uh, so we can, you know, and I'll just, you know, wait for her to tell us what we have to answer. Hi, okay, so I'll try and keep this quick. The first one is for Shikha. Uh, it's moving to a relatively recent topic in the news. Does Hindustan Lever's recent move to drop the fair from Fair and Lovely, will that play a significant role in altering the mindset of girls in SEBI urban and village areas to understand the danger of fair color obsession? I uh, would, you know, uh, share my own view about it. So in Gita, there's a verse that, uh, you know, which says that how much ever better is the uh, work of the other or the dharma of the other, for you, your own swadharma is the best. So uh, you should be original. You should be what you are from within. You should do so that extends to not just your dharma but and your karma but i think it, of uh, to every aspect of life that you should be what you are from within and you should not try to copy anybody because that's not wise and it's wasteful you'll never be able to become what the other is so uh, so whether you are uh, having not the best of nose and best of lips or best of color but what you are born with 
you enhance that that's your strength and that's what you are and you should stay happy with that and you should enhance that and uh, so that is uh, what i think is the philosophy i would uh, you know promote uh, for anybody even for my girls in my unit i always discourage them to you know use any makeup or anything because i said that you are beautiful just like you are and if you are happy and if you have a, a face which is you know energetic so that that's about it so uh, and uh, i think uh, this whole shift in the perception will uh, happen at the top level so by top i would say the intelligence yeah the thinking people the people who are setting trends so industry leaders the activists the think tank of the society they have to you know uh, promote these trends and from top down it will flow to the villages to the semi urban areas and uh, yeah that is where the uh, activists and the industry leaders have to take it up and they have to not think just of profit but of the values they are creating in the society yeah okay thank you um my next questions for subodh in india the average age is 29 and 50% of the population is around age 25 um given that do you think there are any are there any key strategies you see in the business of beauty and wellness um being implemented in the next few years to cater to that demographic oh absolutely i think the i think to me that is a tremendous opportunity because of two reasons one we know that consumers today and particularly younger consumers are a lot more aware than younger consumers were a generation ago or 10 years ago so i think that presents tremendous opportunities i think the second one is this awareness brings with it an opportunity to create lifelong and life term relationship with these consumers because these consumers are going to evolve and if you start them early on the journey of holistic wellness right then i think they are going to stay with the brands with the companies that are able to support their journey so i think that hand holding is going to be important but because of this awareness i think that just opens up tremendous opportunity but that it's important again to go back to the point of authentic don't try and cheat these consumers they well know their mind so if you're not authentic they will figure that out and they will dump you so the opportunity is huge but you need to take it right okay um thank you um the next one is perhaps manoj and also shika can weigh in because it uh, relates to smaller brands um the number of very good relatively new beauty and wellness brands in india but they all struggle with scale do you see any new big windows for go to market opening up to help such brands shikha you want to start yeah i yeah i think uh, the again it will depend on how well uh, the brand uh, owners understand the market and uh, the trends in the industry uh, like smaller brands like us we are not really uh, you know well uh, aware of all the trends in the market and all and we are also not uh, motivated or we don't even imagine big scales because we are not exposed to them we don't move in those circles so we uh, grow organically there are no big leaps that come up so uh, but i think that's just fair enough and uh, it's uh, i think uh, smaller brands will grow organically and uh, but they will always be more stable if they are able to stay uh, so they will be more stable uh, yeah i and i don't mind that at all i think uh, small is beautiful so it's just fine and uh, just understanding the uh, practically uh, the current trends uh, like on shifting to online marketing and all so that helps yeah yeah and i think uh, you, you absolutely said the shikha about online marketing being uh, one of the uh, ways for smaller brands now to get faster yeah i think it has sorry one second i think it has brought democracy in the market so uh, because now uh, like even the smaller brands if they uh, have a good uh, ways of communicating with the customers good you know product pictures and posts and all if they are creative enough they can reach out to the customers and uh, so they don't need the 
uh, expensive advertisements and they don't need to uh, you know bring in uh, beauty pageants or uh, film stars to advertise their products so it has democratized the market uh, online presence so i think yeah that uh, that way the smaller entrepreneurs have a lot of chance i think ankash has answered everything i just add one one more point is that within uh, e-commerce there are many new emerging channels sub channels within e-commerce coming in so it's not only the purview of amazon and flipkart uh, so for example there is another channel uh, you know it's called mizo for example yeah. it connects to 3 million households women in household women entrepreneurs it's also like a social network yeah uh, like yours and these 3 right million uh, women basically yeah. sell to 10 million more households which they know so brands can really uh, like uh, collaborate uh, they can actually go into these uh, social enterprises which are also forming within the digital space uh, yeah. and uh, and this actually gives uh, not only democratization but it also gives a, a sort of a governance which really you know favors the smaller and unknown brands jayant you had a comment no i just quickly i know we are running a running of out of time shikha manoj i think you have said set it up i think small and big is a question of perception a brand you can always become big based on your business model speed is the easier part of it but if your direction is right if you always have a soul of a small brand that you are listening to the customer you are nimble you are responsive you are actually proactive to me that is the name of the game rest all things are relatively easy you hire management professionals from professor amit karna they will tell you how to waste money they'll give you the strategy and that is the easier part of the job so that's for example all our center heads all our institute heads they actually behave like entrepreneur so we go and tell them you have 10 square kilometers of this geography now maximize the brand so forget that vlcc is a global brand but you just maximize 10 square kilometer and that is where the customer connect relationship retention etc etc sorry uh, back to you um i don't know do we have time for any more do we wrap up a last one <clears throat> okay um stan how will beauty companies like l'oreal who don't make chemical free products currently um how would they cope or generate a good market share um in this new environment where people are more interested in plant based materials and natural materials ingredients unmute yeah sorry uh, so first of all i was with real 10 years ago so i won't be able to answer you should ask uh, their ceo jean paul agon but i may be part of an answer uh, um i reckon uh, how do they cope um we said that the world is changing so uh market uh, evolution is on the way we said as well that it's going to accelerate so these players are going to accelerate uh first of all so one of all we don't always know all the brands that these groups own uh, and their own brands in the field of uh, non chemical uh, products so to take some market share in this field and to take some experience as well on how it works from a consumer perspective from a manufacturing perspective from a sourcing perspective so uh, they are changing and i would say uh, 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 trust them uh, i think they are uh, rather in terms of evolution uh, uh, aid of the game uh, um, they released uh, a 2030 uh, 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 climate plan uh, which is uh, quite ambitious so i think uh, 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 people are brands are, are realizing uh, and it's on the way which is really a very good news for our uh, planet and for uh, all of us okay so they they will change thank you yeah so uh So let me just uh, uh, wrap up uh, the session of today. I've been taking notes, uh, so I'll try to sort of summarize. Uh, the whole first thing, of course, is that uh, you know the trends which we have been seeing in beauty and wellness—they uh, are not really new. 
they have been simmering, they have been sort of being there, but somehow these last four months, you know, things have got accelerated. Uh, consumer behaviors uh, really are uh, driving this. And if you look at, uh, you know, beauty separately, uh, you know, consumer mindset on beauty is changing. We talked about uh, so much. We talked about inner beauty. We talked about, uh, Shikha talked about the spirituality within which makes people beautiful. The concept of beauty itself is, is changing. And, uh, you know, there's a difference between, uh, I think there's also a difference between appearing beautiful and staying beautiful. Uh, you could have a physical appearance, you can appear beautiful, but you don't like someone who's not beautiful from within, you know. So to stay beautiful, you have to have, uh, you know, the balance uh, of, of the inner beauty. Uh, but um, also the thing is that you, uh, you can't look uh, good uh, if you don't feel good. So it has to, you know, the external and the internal always are meeting within the beauty space. Uh, when we get into well, wellness, uh, I also felt that, you know, the consumer's attitude towards wellness is becoming more holistic. It is, you know, well-being is becoming the new way people are talking about wellness. They are not single dimensions of wellness. There's no physical wellness, mental wellness, uh, spiritual wellness. They're all sort of integrating into being well-being, you know, something like well-being. Um, in fact, if you add to this, there are some new drivers also coming for, for wellness, social wellness, financial wellness, uh, you know, and you could argue that uh, this is becoming a very big holistic well-being. And uh, if you then look at both beauty and wellness coming together or well-being coming together, you know, the, the direction in which they're moving is accelerating. Because it's not because the industries are moving there, but because I think the consumers are uh, becoming what I, I would say, uh, beautiful well-being. Uh, they are actually, you know, looking at beauty and well-being together. So, so I would call it a beautiful well-being consumer uh, is driving this acceleration. Uh, technology is helping it. Um, home is becoming a new frontier. Uh, sustainability, you know, the, the clean product, all these three other drivers which are there besides the consumer behavior changes are also bringing changes in the whole industry. And this basically may, brings the whole future, the new era, uh, so exciting for people, uh, you know, sitting here and uh, being privileged to be part of uh, this change today. Uh, it gives a very new, new opportunity to launch uh, new products, to repurpose your brands, to look at new business models, uh, to look at a uh, new value chain. And uh, it is uh, the right time to do this. Uh, you know, you can't wait. Uh, it, that's what I felt uh, listening to the panelists. And this would require new capabilities, new way to sort of bring things together, new go-to-market, uh, new leadership capabilities. But these are exciting times. And uh, I think, I hope that the deliberations today gave the audience enough clues enough understanding of these changes and ideas about uh, the opportunities which are, which are going to be coming out there, uh, connecting the dots, we can really forecast where the future is going to be or likely to be. And as uh, uh, you know, people said, that don't spend that much time thinking about it, do things, uh, change things, reinvent, try, but move on. The direction is clear, steps may be what may require iterations. So thank you very much. And uh, over to you, Anshil. Thank you, Manoj. Um, thank you very much for, uh, you know, holding this thought and uh, putting, weaving this conversation together. Uh, very, very insightful, very exciting. Uh, and I'm sure there's a lot for people to take away. Uh, I have filled uh, two pages of notes. So thank you as well, uh, Shikha, Subodh, Jayant, uh, Thank you very, very much for being with us today and sharing so generously all your learnings uh, and reflections. Um, we hope that uh, we will have all of you continue this uh, relationship with CCBP, with IAM as we go forward. There are a lot of new young entrepreneurs who would be you know, delighted to continue some form of mentorship, some kind of uh, engagement with uh, all of you. Um, 
before i close this session i'll just uh, uh, let everyone know that the next rendezvous uh, with our live deliberation is on august 7 uh, where uh, my uh, co-chair professor amit karna will uh, moderate um, a deliberation or discussion on travel and hospitality industry now a sector which is probably the hardest hit by covid and likely to take the longest to recover so a very very uh, uh, exciting uh, exciting next uh, webinar coming up in a series that uh, we've been uh, planning and for the for the rest please uh, stay connected with us on the social media and otherwise there'll be more uh, coming up uh, in the series uh, thank you very much for joining us today and uh, have a lovely evening bye bye thank you everyone bye thank you